Stop listening to Sean King and the media. This video is brought to you by The Officer Tatum Store. The Officer Tatum Store. Get the merch link in the description section. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live and make a video. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Let's get into this. So people that follow me wanted me to talk about the Breonna Taylor case. When I first heard about it, I heard that a young lady was shot eight times in a, in a botched police raid. It's kind of how I heard about it. And, and y'all know how I do it. I say, wait a minute. I see Sean King is talking about it. When this incident happened two months ago, I see the news media is painting a picture about it. Let me go and read the actual reports and see what I can find so I can come up with a conclusion or at least come up with a reasonable idea about what's happening. So let me dispel a few myths that I think are going around. Most people know what's really going on, but these things are going around and they're meant to perpetuate division and to get clicks. So first and foremost, people are saying that the police officers, the police department had a warrant for another individual who was arrested before they went to Breonna Taylor's house, uh, insinuating that they hit the wrong house and that she was you know, caught up in the middle of something she had nothing to do with. That is not necessarily true. Breonna Taylor was on the search warrant. Her house was on the search warrant. She was a part of the investigation. The gentleman who was arrested, based on my training and experience, they probably got him first and they needed to hit this house. It probably was a coordinated effort between either two agencies or one agency. That's typically the way we do search warrants. We hit everybody at one time, so there's no communication, uh, telling people to run, hide drugs, all of the above. Not saying this is in this case, but that's typical. Also, another myth is that the boyfriend was the shooter and that Brianna was not the shooter and she was an innocent bystander. Now, uh, it seems that she still got shot up and she wasn't, I mean, I don't know if she was shooting or not, but it just seemed like she got shot up in the middle of a gunfight. Now, Brianna Taylor and the, her boyfriend, um, there's not a clear evidence of who was actually shooting. The police don't know. But the boyfriend came forward and claimed responsibility, saying that he was the sole shooter and she had nothing to do with it. Now, here's the thing that pops up in my mind is that, and I'm, and I'm confused by this, 20 shots were shot into the residence, which seems to be reasonable. Um, I can see how people are outraged, but when you're a police officer and you realize that multiple people are shooting at one time, uh, it can that number can accelerate quickly. And one thing people may not understand is that uh, you can't, your brain can't, here if gun gunshots are coming this way or this way when you start in a gunfight you're gonna shoot until you feel like everything has subsided and that's just the way it is not saying anybody's right or wrong in this situation once an investigation happened we'll figure out if the police um did, a, did some things wrong excessive and as such also the knocking on the front door situation well the police are claiming that they announced before they made entry into the residence um, according to some of the things that I've read, neighbors did not hear them. That does not mean that they did make announcements. Um, that just means that that's going to be a controversy that somebody's going to have to prove beyond uh, uh, just verbiage. And also inside, Brianna's boyfriend claimed that there was no announcements. They, hear, they didn't hear any announcements and they thought they were being home invaded or they thought they were being burglarized. So they went to get a gun, fired one shot at the police and the police responded. And the first person through the door, I believe, was a sergeant. He was shot once in the leg. They did charge the boyfriend with uh, attempted murder on a police officer, and I, I believe some other charge, but attempted murder was the, obviously the highest charge on a police officer, which makes sense because this is, and, and this is what people need to, need to realize, that in order to charge him with attempted murder on a police officer, they, are, they must have evidence, or they're going to have to prove that they have evidence that he was aware that this was the police officer's. And it's a good indication that he was aware that there was a police officer, although they're reporting uh, something differently. Also, as it stands, the police officers are going to be investigated to figure out if they were the sole cause of a of a uh, a poor shooting that resulted in Brianna's death, or were they both aware that the police were in there and he started shooting, which resulted in her death? If that's the case, and the police are wrong, people are going to get fired, people are going to get sued. Um, but if they were wrong, if they were in the wrong and the boyfriend decided to shoot, they're going to charge him with her death at some point. And that's pretty much the way it works in situations similar to this. Here's the thing. People are like, well, they said they knocked, 
but they didn't. They, I mean, they said they announced, but they didn't announce. That's irrelevant because they had a no-knock warrant. So let me explain a no-knock warrant to people who may not know. And let me give you my credentials so you know I know what I'm talking about. I was on the tactical SWAT team on the Tucson Police Department. Uh, I did a bunch of these uh, warrants. I stood by while people did warrants. I wrote out a few warrants in which we had to explain to a judge why we were going to do a uh, search warrant on the residence. In order to do a search warrant with no knock, meaning that you do not have to announce or knock, you just blast through the door, that is very difficult to get a search warrant like that because it's a very dangerous search warrant because of what we just seen. You break into somebody's house and you know your, your cover's been blown, they could shoot you up and people are gonna take shots at the front door. So it's very dangerous, but it must have been uh, applicable and necessary for them to even request it. Now, I'll explain to you just a scenario of what it took for us to get no knock warrants. So we had to have, we had evidence because we arrested people that purchased drugs from this particular house. And I'm speaking of another scenario. Arrested people that, that sold drugs or bought drugs from this house. People that turned state on the people who were in the house. Informants who went and bought drugs from the house. Also informants who are video recorded with, 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 with mics on them discussing crimes and other things up that was a part of this house. Some detectives with a long eye looking at the residents, watching people come and go. Um, and then SWAT team got involved. We presented it to a judge and the judge granted us no knock exception with tactical SWAT team, hostage negotiation, all of the above. Now, I don't know if this was a SWAT contingency. It doesn't appear that it is. If it's not a SWAT contingency that did this raid, it is ridiculous. I, I, I don't agree. You'd never do a no knock warrant. I don't believe you should do any warrant involving drugs or the suspicion of drugs if you do not have the SWAT team. Now, I can't unequivocally say this wasn't a SWAT contingency. That's just the information here. So when it comes down to uh, her getting shot eight times, I, I think it's very mysterious to me. This is just my opinion, not saying it's facts, that she was shot eight times and he didn't get hit once. It, it, it makes me think, like, I need to know who was where in the house when the shooting went off. Because how does he not get shot when 20 rounds went into the house? She gets hit eight times. That means the majority of the rounds hit her and none of them hit him. And he's claiming to be the shooter. We need more information. Putting this young lady out as an as a EMT and all of this stuff is all media perpetuation of, of whether who's right, who's wrong, trying to make people look bad and make people look good and make it look like they killed a first responder. I mean... Her work is irrelevant at this point. Her criminal record is irrelevant. And I know a lot of people say, oh, what does criminal record got to do? Her criminal record is irrelevant as well. Whether she had it or didn't have it, we need to look at what happened at this instance and then we can determine, okay, is this something that's routine? Is it whatever? This could be been her first criminal record. And it is highly unlikely that a police officer is just going to say, I think people are selling drugs here. You're going to get a warrant from a judge. It doesn't work that way. You need to have a lot of evidence to prove that there are illegal activities happening to get a warrant because if it goes south like it did, then you need to be justified. Now, the police department will get sued and the police department will lose the lawsuit. They're not gonna win this lawsuit. The way the system is set up is that if they cause the death of a person inadvertently, they're gonna get sued, they're gonna pay out, period. Even if the young lady, they, you know, she shot the gun. I mean, I don't know. They could sue him. Michael Brown was justifiably killed or use of force was justified against him resulting in his death and they paid his family out. Uh, Eric Garner, they paid his family out. But in the court of law, these people are not guilty. They didn't even bring prosecution, but they pay them out. So that's just an indication that, you know, that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Even if you're wrong, you get paid out. Um, in this situation, we'll find out who was wrong. But she's going to get paid out. Her family going to get paid out no matter what. Also, the subject of administrative leave. People, I don't know why the media consistently says these officers on administrative leave. That is typical in when there's a high profile situation, like a police that has been in a high speed pursuit, resulting in somebody's death, or you have to shoot and kill somebody as a police officer. They put you on administrative leave. It's not that you're in trouble or anything. It's because that shooting somebody is so traumatic to anybody that you have to take some time off of work 
so that you can regain your consciousness. They give you an opportunity to go to counseling, different things like that. So if you got into a police shooting on my department, uh, my former department, then they will give you three days off so you can chill, so you can kind of clear your mind. Um, because obviously it's traumatic to even murder somebody, even if it's justified, it's still traumatic and they give you an opportunity. And actually our department makes you go see a counselor so they can make sure you're equipped to come back to work. And if you're on administrative leave and you are not equipped to come back to work because you're still suffering from whatever uh, PTSD that you got from shooting somebody, then you're not going to come back to work. You don't lose your job. They'll probably put you on a desk job or they'll give you more counseling and resources so that you don't, don't go crazy and end up being a, a bad cop on duty. So I gave my uh, pretty much all the synopsis of, of uh, the information that I have, my thoughts on this case. If you guys have comments, you think I left something out, you think I'm wrong, make sure you visit the Outstatum store. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all know what it is.